Hello everyone, I'm James Milan and welcome to this Talk of the Town, which is a legislative update. And I am delighted to welcome our very excellent state senator, Cindy Friedman, into the studio. Cindy, always glad to see you. Always glad to see you, James. Thanks for having me. Glad yeah. to be here. Happy summer. Happy summer to you. Um, we have to remember that it's summer. Um, <laughs> I know. I wonder wet. if do you it's get to? A do, wet. <laughs> yeah. Does a does a legislator in Massachusetts get to have summer in the yeah, summer? Or? Absolutely. August is a, is our quiet quiet month. So. Yeah. Well, yep. Excellent. So that's that's good good way to start things. Is that we're anticipating you being able to relax yes, um, sometime soon, but not till the end of this interview. <laughs> Um, so, you know, with the legislative updates, as always, we want just to find out, get a sense of what you've been up to in the months since we last spoke to you, and specifically what of interest to Arlington and the, the other towns in your district um, has been going on, uh, is currently going on. I know, let's start with the budget because that's, uh, it's at some point near the end of the process, I think, right? <laughs> one, and it one, needs to happen hopes, pretty yes, soon. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, but tell us where things stand right now. Uh, things stand uh, in conference committee. So the House does their budget in April and the Senate does their budget in May. And then they uh, come together with both versions and they, it's called conferencing. And they come up with a, um, a budget, um, a compromise budget. It's supposed to be done at the end of June, done by July 1st. Um, we Oops. are still at it. Yes, <laughs> yes, we are still at it. Some years are you know, thornier than others, mm -hmm. um, but uh, the conference committee is hard at work, and um, you know I expect that that we're going to see something at, uh, in the not too dif distant future. Well, I certainly hope so for everybody's yeah, sake, too. including yours. But yeah. um, you were saying that some some years are thornier than others. Yeah. How? Typical or atypical is it for things to not come in by the June 30th or July 1st deadline? It happens, and it happens in Massachusetts. And um, we do these partial budgets. So we'll do a budget that will fund mm -hmm. for a month and then another month. And um, it's not the way we like to do business, but it happens. And um, I, I don't control right. the world so <laughs> well so what my, my sense then is that it's not what anybody would prefer no. obviously and and the aim and the goal is to not make is yeah. to, not have, is that to happen. not have that happen but if it does it happens like you said yeah. and so and people are whatever work, they're philosophical have, right. about it and, and ready to just work to till keep, it's done right yeah. exactly Absolutely. so that yeah. that is where where things stand so that's the that's the story in terms of process Mm -hmm. um, how about content? Uh, anything that you want to highlight from the 2024 fiscal budget? Yeah. Well, I, I can highlight um, on the Senate side, because right. that's the You're, one I know. Yep, so well. of course. Uh, we did a couple, I think, really um, notable things. Uh, so we passed uh, in-state tuition. So anybody who has lived here, for uh, gone to school here for three years or more, is eligible for in-state tuition. Uh, we added another $200 million to workforce development in um, loan forgiveness in the uh, primary care and, and mental health space. Mm. Um, so that brings it up to about $400 million that we've invested. Um, we have... Um, so again, that's loan forgiveness for people who are choosing who are to... Working, to, to in, yes, yeah, who to, are working either in a, in a, um, a community-based mental health center, in a, in a community health center in a psychiatric hospital um, or in a clinic, you know, and, and, and there are some um, requirements around it. You have to stay in some cases mm -hmm. four, in other cases five years, um, and you have to be working in, in a place where there is a, a, at least a minimum amount of, of public payers, so people who are on mass health and don't, uh, um, but it's very uh, substantial, so it's, you know, for psychiatrists, it's three hundred thousand dollars. For docs and nurse practitioners, wow. it's over a hundred. So they're very substantial, and uh, the loan forgiveness programs, and they they are they are at every level of mm -hmm. delivery, uh, sort of deliver, service delivery. So um, right. So the people really, who are doing the grunt work, right. so to speak, so are get, just as likely they are, to. They have a you know exactly. They have the same opportunity. So um, so I. 
think we're, we're you know, I'm, I'm excited about that because I think we need to keep doing that. Um, we also have money in there for home care and elder service, uh, home care and personal care attendant rates to, to stabilize and come up a little bit, which is really mm -hmm. important because we're having so much trouble in getting workforce. Um, so there's some, I think, really uh, good things in there that help the state and the most vulnerable people. Um, yeah, and I know from reading uh, about this that the Senate's version of the budget passed unanimously yes. um, in the Senate, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if that's typical or not, but um, but I do think that we want to, again, remind people that we're talking about things as if they're going to happen, we right. hope, um, but that it is still to be, the two budgets still need to be reconciled yeah. and you're in, in hopefully the last stages of that yeah. process. But, and there, there's money ahead. in there for Arlington, there's money in there for um, AYCC and for, um, uh, for the rebuilding of the um, memorial, the Veterans Memorial. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, there's a couple other um, funding for specifically Arlington. My, my towns ask for things and we try and provide as much as we can for local, um, local earmarks. Right. Um, and I do think that the things that you've mentioned already those are game changers in a lot of ways. The the tuition, the yeah. in-state tuition, is, yeah. that that loan forgiveness. This is this is yeah. like. I think people cannot just understand uh, what the terms are and what the, what the impact might be, but there will be yeah. a, a discernible, yeah. dramatic impact. I would think. And we really took this whole notion of workforce and the um, and the crisis in workforce. We took it very seriously. Um, another thing that I'd point out is we've made all nursing programs in uh, the Commonwealth free tuition. So really? Yep. And, um, and we also have a, a, a pilot that we're doing just next year to get ready to make all community college tuition free. Um, so how will that work? You're going to do take a pilot like is it, when you say pilot is that like a, you're going to do in miniature what you would then like to expand out to or? yeah but I think in this case what we're what I what I think the focus is going to be is how do you implement that so that all of that is 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 free how do you ensure that the other needs that people have when they go to community colleges are met are like addressed. you know stipends transportation, all of the um, um, issues that we've learned about, about what, what barriers people have to getting an education, getting into the workforce, staying into the work, in workforce, and try and remove as many barriers as we can. So I think part of this, this next year is gonna be setting up the structure for free in-state tuition. I think that I really- free, sorry, community right, college tuition. Right, community college. Yeah. Um, and I do really appreciate the fact that you just gave us an illustration of what you're talking about in terms of uh, eliminating barriers, because right. I think people would hear or could hear, I myself, uh, certainly a candidate, to hear such a thing as, oh, uh, moving towards potential free tuition for community colleges. And I would just say, wow, that's great. And that's that. Um, and, but it's not, because like you said, it's more complicated than that. Yeah. You need to address the other things in order for that to have the full force of the benefit you right. want. Right. Right. You have to address the, right. the other real life situations of the people who are going to be taking right. advantage right. of that program. Yeah. Um, so that's the thoughtfulness that uh, you know, I just want to acknowledge and, uh, and, and appreciate. Um, I uh, did some reading around your website as I often do before we talk. And I could tell that you were excited about, you know, various provisions um, in in the Senate budget, at least. <laughs> um, and wondered whether there's anything else that you that you wanted to share about that, or we can move on otherwise. No, I think uh, just um, the only thing I would point out is that once again, Massachusetts is paying attention to what's going on in the rest of the country. There was a very significant, serious ruling that um, in, in Texas uh, around preventative services and preventative health care services, mm -hmm. and um, the Affordable Care Act ensured that 
there was a baseline of preventative services for cancer treatment, for um, uh, some some reproductive stuff, some you know um, diagnostics mm -hmm. that people now go to the doctor and get for free and have to get because they're mandated. And um, there was a ruling that overturned that. And so Massachusetts immediately in this budget, and it's in both the House and the Senate, have stated that all of those preventative services will continue to be available for um, health care plans in Mass Massachusetts. So people will not be losing, you know, cancer treatment, diagnostic mm -hmm. services, I mean, mm -hmm. things that people have come to, to very much rely on. Um, so. And I think it's very much as you just said, that it is something that once again, you are once showing again, that yep. our state house is paying attention to what's happening out there. This has been a real theme of our conversations in these last few years. Yeah. Uh, in the Trump, under the Trump administration, yeah. with various Supreme Court rulings is that we are all dealing with, et cetera, over, you know, going back to uh, last year's um, Dobbs decision, et cetera. Massachusetts state, legislat uh, state legislature, st like, acts fast. Right. Uh, right. in, in the face of those things is what I've noticed in yeah. these last no, few years. No, I think because they're, they're just so critical to our, um, uh, to our commonwealth. And I think the next one we're looking at is the affirmative action mm. uh, Oh, boy, decision, yeah. Oh, is, boy. Yeah, um, so actually, there's already a, a bill that would outlaw, or outlaw would make uh, illegal legacy um, admissions. <laughs> admissions. And, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it didn't take long on that end yeah, either. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it is, uh, it stands in stark contrast as well. What we're just talking about in terms of the alacrity with which Massachusetts has responded to things happening uh, in Washington and, 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 and out, you know, emanating out from there. Um, that stands in pretty stark contrast to the generally slow way yes, that things I know. It's work very, in this I know. state. That's for yes. sure. Um, you, you know, one of the things that uh, I saw on your, on your website was that you were talking about the tax relief provisions, um, that there were some tax relief provisions, yes. again, in, the, in, the, in the, the Senate budget. So it wasn't in the budget, it oh, was in a separate bill. Oh, okay. Uh, it was, there, was, there, was a, there was a House tax bill and a Senate tax bill, and those now are also being conferenced. Gotcha. So it, All right, so we got the budget. Complicated, we right? Got, yeah, right. right, so there's yeah. a lot of groups of yeah. six people meeting, I yeah. guess, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Around some important issues. But yeah. what can you tell us about the tax relief so provisions? So the Senate... The Senate tax package really focused on relief for working and middle, working families, middle uh, income mm -hmm. families. Um, we did, you know, both both of the um, both the House and the Senate have a version of um, raising the estate tax. So we both raise it to two million. We do it a little differently, but we've also. Um, uh, gotten rid of the clift effect so up until now you you got a million dollars and then and then you after owed that on everything now we've stopped that so two million dollars and then it becomes you get taxed on the first dollar above that the second mm -hmm. dollar so you there's no longer this cliff effect that's in both of them mm -hmm. a little differently the way we do it um how we you know what we calculated it on so i think we'll be we'll be looking at that We've doubled the senior circuit breaker. Right. Um, we've increased the earned income tax so credit. Let's, so let's. I'm, I'm going to interrupt you and just make sure that we clarify for people a couple of things. First, what the senior circuit breaker is, um, and then secondly, if we can go take another step back about the estate tax. You mentioned one million versus two million. So I just want to clarify um, what you're saying is that the at if the legislation passes. That the uh, that people will not be taxed at all on, on the, the first, first two million dollars that right. pass on to them through an estate, and then from that right. point forward they will be passed. They will be, they taxed. Will be taxed on right. each new dollar. Right. Okay. Right. Thanks for that. Right. And then circuit breaker. So the circuit breaker is, um, is what limit it, it uh, puts a cap on how much a um, somebody that meets a certain age and a certain income. Mm -hmm. Um, has to pay. We've doubled that now. So um, great. That, so in yes. other words, if somebody, um, well, what, you've doubled the uh, the eligibility. Yeah. Basically? So we basically doubled the cap. 
Mm -hmm. So now you can make up to, I think it's 120,000. Wow. I'm not, uh, don't quote me on that. Right. Yeah, you know, not in front of me and you know Don't me quote with, her. You know me with numbers. <laughs> um, but anyway, that's in there. The, we've increased the earned income tax credit for, mm -hmm. um, for mm -hmm. families, which turns out to be one of the most important um, tax credits that there is anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, that really gives money back to people, puts it in their pockets. Um, so we've kind of def done, our focus has been on those kinds of things. Um, the House has things like um, they've reduced the tax on um, short-term capital gains. Mm. Um, they've, <laughs> uh, you know, they've done a, um, a tax on a very complicated um, uh, issue around large corporations and whether they pay tax, single, single sales tax. So it has to do with where do you pay tax if you are located in a certain place? Mm -hmm. Do you have to pay in pencil in uh, oh, sorry, I see Massachusetts? What you mean. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that I, you know, <laughs> right. I, I understand for about five minutes. Right, you I understand get, for the five minutes but, you need yeah. to understand right. it to vote but on But there's it, more right. corporate, and I think more corporate and more, um, more breaks for those at the higher income level. Right. So, I so think it those sounds are like the there's a little bit of reconciling, as so you've often reconcile. talked about before. Yeah. It's a, it's a, I don't know whether it stands in contrast or not with other, other state legislatures, um, you know, around the country. But here, what I've noticed is that it does seem like the Senate is more likely to be a source of more progressive legislation, and the House is more likely to be a source of more business oriented or not necessarily, you know, not prioritizing business over other interests. But, you know, again, as you were just yeah. illustrating where where that is a little bit more of a, uh, a concern or something that they're. Yeah, I mean, uh, to some extent, it's true. And to some extent, it's not. I mean, we all did the reproductive rights right. stuff very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, we all did the um, immigrant drivers license bill. Um, so, you know, it's, it's right. There's plenty of there's stuff plenty that everybody's, stuff that, right. you know, we do that they don't do that they yeah. do that we, you know, so it's, it's sort of, I think I would say that the Senate is more, um, focused on doing more things. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you're, yeah, any house colleagues who happen to be, or, you know, house members who happen yeah. to be tuning in. Maybe they'll have something to say yeah, to you for, yeah, about exactly. that. You'll see. Exactly. Um, so I want to take, uh, you know, a, a portion or perhaps all of the time that reminds to us to talk about things, you know, what we're looking forward mm -hmm. to or what you're looking forward to yeah. besides your August break. Right. Um, and specifically, you know, for things that are going to be of particular import for Arlington yeah. residents. Um, and then just more generally around those areas of interest of yours that we've long talked about, yeah. um, whether there's anything that's exciting for you or that you want people to know about and coming up for the next next session. Okay. Um, well, in terms of Arlington, there's a number of home rule petitions that have been sent to us. So these are, these are um, warrant articles that have been passed by the town and have mm -hmm. uh, and now need approval for, of the state. So there's um, the electrification um, fossil fuel bill that would all new construction would be electric right. and not, you know, and um, would be renewable fuels. Would be right, renewable. Right. Um, there's the rodenticide bill, which would allow towns, would allow Arlington to ban um, certain rodenticides mm -hmm. and toxins that have been killing animals. Uh, there's a same uh, early registration, home rule, um, early voter, and, and ranked choice voting for ranked local, voting. For local um, elections. Those are um, for, everyone's been heard at, at the committee they've been sent to except one, and so now we'll, we'll focus on, the, uh, the um, delegation will focus on moving those out of those committees and getting them onto the floor to be passed. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the big, I think those are the mm -hmm. main Arlington ones that are happening. And then in uh, more broadly, we will see a uh, health care bill. And we are very much focused, um, my, my group, my guys, mm -hmm. are really focused on pharmaceutical costs, pharmacy benefit managers, 
private equity and how that's, um, you know, cost, mm -hmm. um, just the cost of everything and how we need to better analyze and understand where all these astronomical costs are coming from that people that pass down to the uh, to the patients. Mm -hmm. um, and so those are some of the things that we're going to be really that we are really going to be focused on primary care. It's another one, um, and reducing the administrivia that doctors and providers and have to go trivia. through in order, just, you know, that mm -hmm. it's nothing to do with the service of, the delivery of service. Mm -hmm. It just has to do with archaic, archaic you know, and insurance and payments mm -hmm. and, and, and stuff that happens at the systems level where they, you know, they are the recipients of just this incredible burden. Um, and it's really moving, p pushing people out of the, you know, out of the workforce. So, so that's the kind of one of the healthcare pieces. And then the other thing I think we will definitely see is some kind of nursing home bill, mm. um, which I think is a good thing. Um, I think it'll come from the house. And um, uh, and that's what when you say nursing home bill, do you mean regulation? To, uh, yeah, to update nursing homes. So, okay. you know, regulations. Um, I hope we'll see some um, uh, wage information in mm. there, training, mm. um, uh, uh, oversight, and um, uh, accountability mm -hmm. on the sides of, of the nursing home. I think there's been a lot of focus on that since the pandemic. And I think now, they'll, you know, I know that Elder Service Committee has been working very hard on a bill um, to uh, to address some of the issues and some of the learnings from um, COVID. You know, I'm reminded in what you were just saying, I'm reminded of the deep dive that you came in here and took with us on the ph pharmaceutical bill yeah. uh, that is not law. <laughs> right, but we, uh, but was, we try again. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But, but really, I think a lot of the issues that you were just saying were, were stuff that you really explained in good detail. Yeah. Uh, during that session, and they will they will continue to be pertinent yeah. because they will be part of every bill Absolutely. that that we, gets we introduced until that. something is actually yep. passed, as yep. you said. Yeah, we have to we have to do something about the cost of pharmaceuticals and the role of pharmacy benefit managers in exactly. determining those costs and those rebates. Those. Yeah. Hate to say it, but those wicked PB, uh, you know, uh, you gave me an education that day yeah. that I have actually taken forward with me in terms of how I uh, kind of see and read between the lines of the things that I that yeah. that I am um, taking in in this in that area. Um, I have one quick question about something that you were, you were talking about the different um, home rule petitions from Arlington. Um, and obviously, you, I'm sure every year you have home rule petitions, or just about, I would assume, from all of your communities. Um, are, is that true, or is that an Arlington, is that more like from our town? No, we, our, our, we get them, we get, we get them actually across the, across the, um, across the district, across the districts. I mean, for instance, we, we often get liquor license mm -hmm. home rules. Mm. So or some very bizarre, archaic, probably not very flattering reasons. The state is, is towns are required to get their liquor license um, approved by the state. I think it's ridiculous. Um, I don't think it's anybody's business in the state, um, but it is there. And so we'll often get liquor licenses, especially around places that are doing um, commercial development. So Burlington, Woburn, mm -hmm. Often that's the kind of you know um, right. things that they need to, to get done because of their their communities um, and what's going on there. Um, Arlington and Lexington um, are also they're pretty active, right? Um, and um, so we get them from it. We get we get. So I was I was par partially interested in that, but also even more so in. The fact that you you described that each one of these is still in process in some okay, way, yeah. like three out of the four of mm -hmm. them have been considered by the committees and they're all in process. My what I'm curious about, and I, I expect people in the audience might be curious about, is is this going to be a heavy lift for any of these to get through, or with home rule petitions of this sort, 
it's not a rubber stamp either, I'm sure, but is it like, can we expect that there will be action on these things? So and on certain things you absolutely can, like liquor licenses. And, mm. and sometimes, sometimes members will play politics mm. on things, right? Okay. No. That don't have really? anything to do with the actual issue at hand. Some of them are much harder. So what happened, for instance, Arlington had a home rule um, to uh, their initially the home rule for the uh, fossil fuel. Mm. And it was stopped in the committee. Mm. Um, the, the chair of the committee did not agree that this is how it should be approached, that it should be, I see. you know. And so we had to fight to get something in the bill that was broader, mm -hmm. but it didn't, didn't necessarily help Arlington mm -hmm. and Lexington, mm -hmm. okay? So in that case, it wasn't a rubber stamp, and it was a big, it was a very heavy lift. And um, I don't, it, it, I don't feel like it, it ended it to the satisfaction mm -hmm. of, you know. Um, so that's an example. Yeah, of, um, yeah, that's really, that's great clarification yeah. that, you know, it depends on kind of what the content is right, right. of the thing itself. And again, liquor licenses are a great illustration of, of the things that are almost rubber stamped yeah. because everybody recognizes, as, you, as you've yeah. just said, that this is just some kind of holdover from a time and it's no longer relevant if yeah. it ever was. Right. Um, and you, so right. you just need to do, deal with it as quickly as possible. Yeah, we've had um, home rule petitions which have taken police and f or fire or police and fire out of um, civil service. And um, sometimes they can become a little bit, uh, um, you know, contentious. Controversial. My feeling mm -hmm. is, is if my town, sorry, asks me, to do something that the town has voted on and it is not illegal or immoral. It is my responsibility as a, um, as the elected official and representative to move that, you know, those requests through. So that's how I feel about home rule petitions. And I strongly believe that unless you have some incredibly good reason that you can explain and make sense and really it, it shouldn't happen because it's it's negatively affecting so many mm -hmm, other people. Mm -hmm. I, I just I think it's I right. think the, we should honor the towns. It's their you know. Yeah, and in in this case, the three things that you mentioned already, um, which have been you know which are in their various committees. I know those things are really important. They're very important to this town. To this town. They Absolutely. may not be important to right. legislators from other places or whatever, but they are right. definitely important to this town. Right. So we'll and, keep... and why we need to have rodenticide too, in in our water and on our land, and you know, is is, is beyond me. Yeah. I just, that's a no brainer. So. So yeah. let us hope yeah. that uh, rational yeah. minds prevail, and yeah. I, I, I expect so and hope so, and and look forward to you know our next yeah. conversation and hopefully confirming that that is the case. Yes. Me too. Um, so thank you, as always. Thank really you. Really appreciate it. Um, I said to you before we started taping, oh yeah, we don't have that much to talk about today. Maybe we won't go the whole half hour. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Yeah. So just make sure you book a half hour every time. Okay. okay. I will. And thanks for having me. And I hope you have a, a good Russell summer. Thanks. Thanks very much. And you too. Enjoy your break. I have been speaking with Cindy Friedman. She is our state senator. Um, and this has been a legislative update as part of the Talk of the Town series. We really appreciate Cindy's time. We really do. And we appreciate yours as well. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.